today we have Sid31 and we're here with Dr. Magic and Cara Wolf. So thank you for joining us guys. Thank you. Uh, what is the entity that is Sid31 and who are you guys? Uh, so for me, Sid31 is, is a challenging music pro project to try and challenge every other band to do something really dynamic and different. We get stuck in our ways, uh, like the normal band combo, band arrangement, normal songwriting. And a lot of people say like, oh no one comes out to gigs anymore and stuff like that. But a lot of people stay at home, PS4, going to the future on games, new challenges, new experiences. And as a musician and artist, you've got to combat that. You've got to get people out, so you've got to do sort of really progressive and challenge all our friends. In other bands, you want to do sort of really different, really dynamic. So to me, it's, it's a challenge. It's like laying down the ground and see, see what you can do. So constructive chaos. Pretty much, yeah. So where does the name Sid31 come from? It's named after my dad. Uh, my dad was called Sydney, which is Sid with, with a, a Y at the end, well, anyway. And he had me quite late in life. Um, he was born in 1931, so he was a bit of an old kid when he had me. And I was doing electronic music before, and it needed to change. I wanted to put more challenges in it to make it a little bit more heavier. And that just came at the time as my dad passed away. So I tribute, uh, called it after him. And um, the other thing is, the nickname Sid31 I had for my dad is I had that tattoo Sid31. I had it about 15 years before Sid31 came around. So okay. when I was searching for a band name, <laughs> so I got the tattoo um, about 15 years before Sid31 came around, and I was searching for a new name for the project, and literally it was right in front of my nose. So I'm like, that's going to be the name of it. The album has been received exceptionally well. <gasps> I mean, really well. did you expect such a reaction from what has been a self-released album? Yeah, it's, it's a totally self-released album. Um, I really want to do the self-release because there's a lot of small labels out there that sort of don't have a great relationship with, it, with the bands and the artists. And a lot of small labels, uh, they'll do digital distribution or you know, pay for a mix down and stuff like that. And I was like, well, I can do all this myself. Why do I need to be with these guys? So I did it all and it felt really good. It's cutting out the middleman, it's cutting out all the mud and clutter and being able to release this and had my own goal meant that I could focus on one thing and one thing alone and that's pure songwriting. Um, for people that chat to me online, uh, they'll see that I share lots of pop songs, classic <laughs> song structures and I'm not doing that ironic. I cheeky love. girls. <laughs> yeah, even cheeky girls, Venga boys, way over some of the lot. I focus on classic song structures and that's what I've done this album. And I think having that classic sound, it's been really appreciated by everyone that's reviewed it. I've had mm. phenomenal reviews and it's just been a fantastic feeling. Yeah. Considering you didn't expect anything. Yeah, yeah. I, I expected a wall of silence because I'm doing it for art, as a hobby. It's like people might like it, go, oh, that's nice, but this has been phenomenal. Yeah, it's hard to gauge people's sort of reaction to things nowadays within there, isn't it? So, yeah. yeah, it's nice that it's gone pretty well. Mm. I mean, saying that, Angel 41, you've had <laughs> 10,000 or more views in a week. Um, I'll stop you there. 112,000 in just over a week. Well done. <laughs> and I was like, fuck me! So, yeah. considering that's a song that's so completely different to your usual mm. style of music, so tell us uh, about that song. Like, what did that guy, what does that mean? It to resonates you? to a lot of people. Yeah, it's. I've sobered up, I don't do drugs, I don't drink, and giving up alcohols help me focus on stuff and listen to myself that I probably wasn't listening to over the years. And one of the hardest days in my life was when my dad passed away and I was with my mum. And on she your was birthday. Oh yeah, my dad passed away on the birthday, the selfish, on my birthday, the selfish <laughs> bastard. But I was with my mum and she was absolutely fucking heartbroken. And you can hear someone, the entire world has ended for them. Now I do a lot of Mad Max stuff and apocalyptic themes, but there's something a bit more personal about when someone as an individual, their entire world is ending around them. And that way it's like my mum, and I want to sort of capture that feeling. And it's something that people seem to relate to. The song is going back to classic song structures. I borrow a lot from Roy Orbison, uh, from Joy Division as well. Not just like, oh, we're miserable, but that classic sound. And I've put it all together in a song, just basically just because I fucking wanted to. I can do noisy shit anytime, I can do heavy shit mm -hmm. anytime I want, but this needed to be told, it's a story that needed to be felt by people, and people have just fucking loved it. Well, people can't even listen to it all the way through because of the memories. Yeah, I, I get people like saying, oh, I can only listen to half this, it's welled me up in tears. I'm like, oh, you've been a bit polite, and then they'll tell me a long story about you know, someone that's passed for them and stuff like that, and I'm like, wow, I've had so many stories in my inbox about it, it's just really fucking hit people hard, and I'm really pleased with it. 
just because I can as well. Yeah, mm. I mean the amount of people that obviously you've drawn in. So you, your band's drawn in people from obviously punk because you're an apocalyptic punk yeah. band. But the apocalypse part has brought in people from industrial. Mm. It's brought in from people from metal. So was that intentional to bridge all of the alternative cultures together, or is that just a happy accident? I shall tell you. I'll give you all the answers, and you can choose. Well, I was really lucky. I just wanted to do some really good, honest music, and everyone's loved it. Answer A. Answer B is, fuck it. If you've got to survive, you've got to make sure you're pulling every punter out there. Take no risks in like, oh, whether like it or not. Plan everything and draw in everyone. So take whichever answer you think is the most genuine. Fair enough. <laughs> you just mentioned Mad Max. Mm. So is there any other sort of punk, uh, well, not necessarily punk, but is there any other media culture influences or band influences that you guys have been... Uh, Prodigy? Yeah. Prodigy's, Prodigy's like a, an interesting uh, influence because it, it it's an influence that ev everyone's influenced by, so you don't even need to say it. Well, Fear Factory. Fear Factory's a huge influence on there. Um, I've gone back to a lot of, uh, I suppose if you could call it apocalyptic punk, it's like, it's called... Uh, DB or crust, and a lot of that uh, from the 80s was like a lot of punk bands like Discharge and all that. A huge influence on me. They were young and naive, and at that point they really thought the world was ending, and we were very close to nuclear war. And the sheer panic in the song structures and the style, it just captures something utterly fucking well, wasn't unique. Wasn't the pistols the same? They didn't the, the, the pistols were the pistols were just really angry at everyone. Discharge was just came Misfits? across just fucking terrified. Misfits are huge influence mostly because they can have that heavy sound but again they go back to the classic song structures yeah uh, i think they rip off a lot of uh, elvis roy Orbison, and a lot of classic rock and roll and cool stuff as well which is i really, really like i think it makes sense what you just said because obviously like the world is on its last legs <laughs> fuck so and obviously that does come across in your album so yeah if sid 31 was remembered for one thing what would you want it to be <laughs> the challenge it's given to everyone i laid down the gauntlet fucking beat that you know stop fucking about and just trying to be like noisy for the sake of it or doing things the wrong way what i'm really frustrated by a lot of my peers is they do things because they can rather than doing stuff that they think they can't do set yourself a goal your ambition this is what i want to do and find a way of making that work rather than like oh this is what we do we're racist we've got a drummer we'll just jam just set yourself unachievable goals because even if you only halfway of meeting that, you've broken all expectations or set yourself unachievable goals. That's what basically it's all about. Do you have a signature dance move yet or, <laughs> sim or no. symbol for the crowd? I mean, like V2A ah. have obviously taken the ah. V8 symbol and obviously we all yeah. love it. You guys can up with a symbol? Ah, I've got my rock and roll stances, it's like a Ramones long yeah, leg stance. But that's also like Billy Idol, you've got your back. Yeah, I've got my Billy Idol pack stances because yeah, he fucking knows how to pull up, pull up holes. And I've got my signature hand fan dance, which I always do at the last song, which is Mr. You shall have to see <laughs> here. I'll try and film it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. No rules or judgment. So, mm. like any sort of type of song. If you wanted to cover one song like, that you'd love to do the most, what would it be? Good question. We had a, a long yeah, yeah, journey down on the coach today, and we spent most of that journey talking about which to cover. I think we've decided. Uh, I'm going to give you some clues what it could be, who's in the runner-up, and then you'll find out. Um, it was going to be Mamma Mia, because it sounds fucking brilliant, <laughs> down-tuned. The song structure is fucking impressive. It's Billy Idol dancing by myself. It's Venga Boys, boom, boom, boom. Um, yeah, I think so. This be, needs to be a bonus CD on your next album. Yeah. We, we, I've Focus talked about loads to just doing, yeah, I want to do a covers EP, but um, you've got to get the licensing otherwise. The oh, box yeah. take you down, so. Yeah. Yeah, we, we did a cover of Mr. Vane, and we released it, and the copyright was fucking expensive. We had to pay one pound for every download. And we thought, no, it's gonna download it. And we got fucking 600 bastard downloads. It's like, stop downloading, yeah. it's ruining me. So, yeah. Were yeah, you not charging for that download? We were charging a quid, but every quid had to go back to the yeah. copyright owner. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. So, we did things the right way, and yeah. it hurt so hard. Well, come up with something original that sounds yeah. similar. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll ask you some more questions mm. after you set. All right? Yeah. Okay. See you soon. See you soon.
was a great show. How did it feel for you? Fucking sweaty! We shall define the term ball soup appropriately for you. It was wonderful. So I fucking loved it. Everyone's really happy. Everyone's bouncing. Everyone was fucking dancing, you know, everyone was like throwing their arms around. The landlord came and like told me how fucking chuffed with us and he asked us to come back and play for him. Landlords don't always fucking say that. And he was like, yeah, that was great, that was great. So it's like a fun night on our own. What's your guys' favourite thing about playing live? Um, I don't know, just the, just the fact that um, something you made making someone's night. Yeah, know? it's that fucking connection with people, isn't it? It's like something you're doing is making someone's night, yeah. Yeah, it's just a look in people's eyes. It's like, that's just fucking great. And what bands would you like to uh, share the stage with your people? Uh, I'm quite boring, so I'm going to say hardcore punk bands like Discharge, Misfits, Pretty. Um, uh, horror, the uh, spell H uh, H I I I I I I I Scarlord, fucking Venga Boys. Fucking Venga Boys, absolutely fucking losing. We'd probably die lord if they came in. Boo! You killed that one here. No, no, Venga Boys is our top priority. Yeah, yeah, And what's next for the band? The album's out, the video's out, so it's more jiggy, and hopefully a new video out. Can't decide what to do for Halloween or early in the year. So yeah, I think mean, we're going to start working on the next album. Um, it's already written. We've just got to record it. Which is like gonna be fucking nuts. And what's uh, is there anything you'd like to say to your fans? Fucking fans, you know. I don't like using the word fans because it can be a bit patronising. But we're playing Benny Live. People dance, and you're talking to them, and the end of being friends is like friends you've never met before. So that's the fucking thing, just keep being yourself, keep being friendly, and just fucking bye. Well, thanks guys, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Whoa! <laughs> so far.